This is Property Influences, where we talk to some of the leading figures in the retail real estate market. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to answer some of my questions. Um, I wondered first if we could start with your, uh, if we can call them primary objectives in attending uh -huh. MIPIM Asia. What would you say they are? It's, it's a quick and efficient way to get a snapshot of what's going on here in the real estate markets, uh, both in Hong Kong and China and for the whole region. And I find it to be the most efficient, particularly coming year after year, to get a quick understanding and get the feel for what the local players uh, see as the future for their market. Um, this year we have tremendous turmoil happening in Europe and in the US. I haven't heard anyone uh, mention the issue. And so the first year I came, we were all concerned about will the US recession take the local market down. It's not even part of the conversation. At the same time, you hear the importance of China you know, everybody is looking up to China as the engine of growth for the region. And uh, talking globally, mm -hmm. what, how do you see those current economic conditions globally uh, having an impact on the Asian property markets over yes. the coming year? Yeah, so, so it's a question of uh, what kind of capital flow do we expect in this region? And uh, we've seen uh, recently lots of flow from the rest of the world into the region because of um, a strong expectation of growth, even though in the last few months there's been a calm down in some of the major markets. But Australia and New Zealand in particular have attracted lots of capital. These are small markets. It's not going to keep being the destination. Um, there's, there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, for secondary cities in China. But I think maybe a lesson I learned here this year is uh, uh, enthusiasm for the discerning investor. A lot of uh, heterogeneity in the perspective for growth across the secondary markets in China. Very little conversation outside of China because the, even the secondary cities in China are such big local economies. And, and what are the other trends you've noticed uh, across sectors, say? Um, well, uh, the housing sector is always on the horizon. Uh, there seems to be quite a bit of confidence in the Chinese government managing um, the, what we could call the bubble. Uh, with uh, people looking forward to maybe reshuffling the type of housing that gets produced, understanding the needs of the middle class. I think in the, there's still lots of growth in the retail sector, uh, lots of luxury still, uh, because of all the demand for such um, product. Uh, in the office market, a very tight supply in Hong Kong, uh, and that's going to persist for a number of years. So not much perspective of pricing becoming easier. But a lot is said about the aging population. What mm -hmm. sort of impact do you think that will have on China, uh, for example? Well, it, it, it's a question as to whether, uh, given the growth path they are on, um, are they, do, do they lack the youth population that, that helped Japan and Korea through their growth uh, transition? Um, at the same time, it could be an opportunity because this aging population come at a time of there was lots of savings accumulated by this population. And there's a question as to whether China will, will move directly to different types of housing and infrastructure to service that aging population. I think this is where the government needs to pay attention and um, they are paying attention to this issue. Do you see sustainable development as a, as a key issue and is it being grasped enough, would you say? Well, it, it could be that this, uh, this is a place, you know, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, where uh, government officials have felt what it means to be in an unsustainable uh, equilibrium with very serious problems, for example, with air quality, very serious problems with management of water, uh, and therefore maybe greater sensitivity in the development of new cities uh, to those issues. At the same time, with growing income, people are demanding uh, better environment, better access to leisure, for example. So, so, and at the same time, you see places like Mipa Mesia, architects from around the world converging to, to this region and offering the services and offering their ideas for better, not just buildings, but better city designs. So I'm very encouraged that we're going to see real progress here. And there are issues, um, you know, they put on hold the reforms during the crisis to manage the crisis. And I think it's a key issue is what happens to the leadership in the country over the next two years, uh, whether we see a going back or whether we see the country uh, taking on the reforms and continuing the path that they were on before the crisis. Great. Thanks for your time. Thank you.